What's going on guys? This is Kazi. Welcome to probably the most anticipated tutorial on this channel. I'm talking about Tenet. We're gonna be creating a look from this epic shot that we've seen in the first trailer and then all the trailers that followed. There's gonna be so many techniques that I'm using here that are gonna blow your mind. So grab a notepad like I always say. And also, I need to know if you guys have a suggestion on how to watch this film legally, okay, at home. Because I know it's released in some theaters, but not in California. I'm dying to see it. Also, a sidebar, I just finally got a chance to watch Parasite with my wife. And oh my God, I mean, it lives up to the hype and then some. I am completely blown away. I wanna do a look on it if you guys are interested. If that's something that you wanna see, drop a comment below. And guys, a couple of announcements, okay? First of all, check this out. Got a brand new panel, so excited about it. And if you guys wanna see an overview video, unboxing video, something like that about the panel, let me know. And for those that wanna level up their color grading game, check out the link in the description. One hour long free training where I will show you how to get the perfect skin tones out of your Sony S-Log 8-bit footage, how to get the clean white look. It's the go-to commercial look. How to get the creamy film look how to fix the dreaded gamma shift, and much, much more. Link is in the description. And I totally forgot to mention, today is our kitty's third birthday. This little guy right here is Ghost, and that's Gilly. She's so sassy, and this dude is just the dumbest cat you'll ever meet. And guys, I just wanna take a second and thank each and every one of you we're hitting 100k subs either today or tomorrow and it wouldn't be possible without your support. I mean it from the bottom of my heart. I really appreciate each and every one of you. And if you want to congratulate me, then go ahead, smash that like button, subscribe to my channel for more awesomeness, follow me on Instagram. You know value bombs are being dropped there every single day. Let's roll the intro. I am so excited to be working on this film. I genuinely kid you not, it is probably the most ass look and for a very great reason. It's so pushed, but feels so right. So there's a lot of things going on. We're gonna go through all of it and let's just jump right in, okay? So first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and open up my OFX. I'm gonna type in palette. I'm gonna bring that boy right here and then Let's look at this and tell the story through the art of scopes, okay? So what is really going on here? One thing that we can see right off the bat is just look at what's happening in the shadows. They're not even, okay? So what I mean by that is that look at how red is down here and then green is up there and then blue is kind of in the middle between the red and the green and that's what's creating that cyan in the blacks. And we can see that, right? Like right here. So the pure blacks are not there because this is basically reading this right there, okay? But the actual blacks are somewhere around here. This hair is still sitting right here. It has a hint of a teal and that's what's coming from here and we can see it in the scopes. Also, let's just look at the vector scope and see where the entire image is sitting. So the entire image is sitting in this cyanish blue world and you can see it's cyan and blue and it's sitting in that world, right? It's pretty dominant, but then, we see a little hint popping up here, which is the skin tone. So the skin tone is pulled out right there. We can see it. And then there's a little bit more right here, which is what this yellow is in the highlights. So check this out. Okay, it's very interesting. And that's what's creating that complementary color. We got these right there going on in the highlights. It's not pure white. Then we got the perfect skin tones. They're a little bit desaturated. The reason why it looks so poppy is because the rest of the image is push so much in that world. And that's what we're gonna be creating. And guys, even in the waveform, we can read that, right? Like look at how green is so dominant and then red is sitting down here. That's what creates the cyan or the teal look. So now that we have this in mind, it's gonna help us quite a bit jumping into our look and then figuring out a game plan how we're gonna attack it. I'm gonna move to our clip right here. So this is our clip and I'm just gonna turn on loop. So it is set to loop. And then let's just go ahead and park it to our hero frame, which is gonna be somewhere around two-ish. So this is our hero frame. So I'm gonna park it right there. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of our effects. So just let's 
hide the open effects window so we can buy some real estate. And now what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and I wanna click on this guy so we can actually pull up our image from here. And that can happen by clicking right here and saying selected still images. Okay, so boom, now we got our image right here. And I wanna go ahead and make it a little bit bigger so you guys can actually see what's happening. And I'm gonna pull this over something like that. And we're going to keep our note tree here and still should be legible. You guys should be totally fine. Okay. So first thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and hit tab so I can label my node and I'm going to, and tab is basically, I um, so went under keyboard customization and just use tab as my label, uh, you know, or renamer, if you will. So I'm going to click on tab and then I'm going to go ahead and call this, um, Basically, this is my exposure. So EXP, that's my exposure, okay? So let's get the exposure going and we're gonna do our traditional contrast um, and uh, lift gamma gain. So I'm gonna start off with contrast and let's just get going, okay? So I'm gonna come to somewhere around here. Um, not anything crazier than that. Then I'm gonna go into my lift and pull it down. Okay, something like that. And then I'm going to take my gamma and lift it up. Okay, and lift down, gamma up, right? Lift down, gamma up, and somewhere around here. And I'm just kind of looking at my scopes, and they're not bad, right? I mean, if you look at it, we're kind of in that world. I'm going to take my gamma, lift it a little bit more, something like that, bring my lift down. And I'm just looking at the hair to hair match, boom, boom, like hair to hair. It's not bad, okay? So this is looking pretty good. I'm gonna take my gain and just raise it a little bit, not too much. So somewhere around here, because I'm just really looking at this hottest part right here and my lights, you know, obviously have the reason to be as hot as they can be. So something like that is not looking bad. I'm just gonna give it one more push with the gamma and then lift down a little bit. Maybe something like that. So if I do on and off just in the first node, we come a long way, okay? So if we look at our anchors, right? You look at the black points right there to the hair right there, and we can even see it in the scopes, how we're matching. And then how much I lifted the gamma. I mean, look at that, 0.11. I lifted the gamma up to like really put it in the same zone. Like look at this to that. So our gamma is looking good. And then look at our gain up top, boom, gain to gain, okay? So we're matching on many levels, even in our waveform, you can see that. So that is looking pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new node. And then here, let's go ahead and call this our balance. And the way I'm gonna do the balance is I'm gonna start off at the saturation. So let's just crank it a little bit, like around 75-ish. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our color temp and tint. It kind of just balance out the image, not too crazy. We still wanna keep it in that little cyan world a little bit but I'm just trying to get the green out. You know, I'm using my tint right now and I'm gonna pull it back and then I'm gonna take my temp and pull it back and then kind of bring it back. So keep doing that a little bit, you know, just to get, get the skin looking right and get everything else just looking proper, okay? So let's do before and after. So this is taking a lot of the dinge out and it's making my image look somewhat neutral, right? And the reason why I wanna make it neutral is because we're gonna be using our layer mixer. And for a layer mixer to work really well, you have to create enough separation so it can push and pull very nicely without destroying your image, okay? And this will all make sense once we get into that part. So let me see what else can I do, right? So let me just do a little bit of more push and pull and see how if I can separate my image a little bit more, maybe not. So let's just keep, doing it. My skin is looking good. All right. I think I'm happy here. Okay. So I'm going to leave my balance here. And I think this is totally fine. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new node. And then this one is going to be our look. Okay. And we are going to get pretty heavy with our look. So I'm going to leave my look there, but I'm going to go ahead and create a layer mixer. And in the layer mixer, this is where my skin is gonna go. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in skin, and this is my skin, okay? So I'm gonna go into my qualifiers, and um, I'm gonna come out of this mode or else it won't let us pick the skin, and I'm just gonna go ahead and do this. Um, actually, select our qualifier, boom, do that. 
look at how clean our key is at this point. So now what I, all I have to do is move this around a little bit to see if I can get it even cleaner. And that's already looking good. And then go into my saturation and see what I can do here. So not much to do there. And then go under my luminance and see what I can do there. Not much to do there. And then what I can do is just go into my denoise and crank it up to around 10-ish as we usually do. And then I'm going to come out of here. And now we've done a pretty good job picking our key. So let's go back into our reference mode here. And all we have to do is now let's try to get the skin in where his skin is by using hue versus hue options. Okay, so I'm going to go right there. We're still in our skin node. So just so you guys know, I'm going to keep it somewhere around here. And uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to select our hue versus hue. Hue versus hue. Okay, that's what we're under right now. And basically what I want to do right now is uh, go ahead and start moving my red channel and just see what I need to do. So basically I need to add more magenta. That's what needs to happen. So it was sitting right here, super yellow. This is magenta. So let's crank that up, right? Hue versus hue. My red channel is up now. I'm going to do the same with my yellow. And look at first is going to look, you know, kind of ridiculous, right? Like it's just like, dude, what are you doing? It's too much. So let's pull that up first. And now what we need to do is so if I do before and after, there's a big difference here, right? Now what I need to do is simple. Like I'm going to go under my hue versus, now I'm going to go under my hue versus saturation. Okay. So now we're under hue versus saturation and just watch this. I'm going to pull my red down because I'm trying to pull some saturation off. Like look at what's happening here, right? Like it's not very saturated. I'm going to do the same thing with my yellow and all of a sudden, like if I do before and after, just look at the difference, how we're sitting in that world. Now we have to do a few more things. So I'm going to go in here, click on my hue versus luminance. Now I'm under my hue versus luminance. And I'm going to go ahead and same two channels. So I'm going to take my red and I'm going to crank it up a little bit. I'm going to take my yellow and I'm going to do the same. I'm going to bring it up and like, look how close we're getting. Okay. In terms of saturation and the hue values, right? So now what I want to do is just simple lift gamma gain. So I'm going to go under my gain and I'm going to raise it up and just look at how much of a difference it's making. And obviously I don't want to overdo it. So I'm going to bring it somewhere around here and then I'm going to go under my gamma and just pull it down a little bit. It kind of create the similar contrast that we got going on on his face right there. Now what I see is that we need to do a little bit more hue versus saturation and we need to pull it down a little bit more, right? So I'm going to go under my yellow and pull it down. And let's just leave it here for now. I can even bring my red up and pull my yellow down a little bit. So let's go far. All of us go far and then kind of pull back. All right, guys. So if I do, are you ready for before and after? I mean, look at that before and after. So obviously we're not done. We're going to be making more changes, but the difference is night and day. Okay. So that's my skin. It's locked in. It's not going anywhere. I'm going to go ahead and create another layer mixer. And in this one, once again, we have to come out of this mode. All I want to do now is just grab the highlights. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to create a pretty hefty softness in my luminance value. And then I'm going to start cranking it and basically just look what I'm doing. I'm just selecting my highlights. Okay. Like almost this. And then I'm going to come out of this. And uh, all we need to do is let's go back in here. I'm going to try to bring this warmth in there, okay? So I'm going to go ahead, start with my gain, and just start with my gain and start just cranking it in, right? So like really push it, all of us push it first to kind of start seeing some big change, and then we can modify it as we like, right? So right now, if I do before and after, you know, it may seem like, man, it's way too much. But once we have our look completed, it's not going to look that bad. Another thing that we can do with our low softness we can play around with it and see how much it helps us, right? So if I like, look at this, if I like really do that, like now it's very gentle, right? Like, so it's not as abrupt, so it's a little bit better. Um, how much is it affecting? Let's check it out. So I'm going to turn that off and then see how much it's affecting. So 
I can control that a little bit more, something like that. And now if I come out and go back here, um, it's looking a little bit more doable, right? So it still has that warmth. Now, guys, don't forget that ultimately, yes, we want to get closer, but we want it to look proper. We want it to look right. We don't want to make it look too fake. So I think we can still push it a little bit and give it a little bit more yellow. So even something like that and pull it back a little bit, maybe. So big difference. Okay, where we were to where we are now, and we're going to go back and forth and make these changes until it just looks right. So for now, we can park it here. Okay, now we get into our look node. So the first thing that we need to do, this is a very, very crucial step. Okay, the first thing that we need to do, we need to even out everything. You see that there's some discoloration going on, like this is green, then this is like a bluish hint right here, then this is also cyan. So there's multiple different tonalities going on. So the way we're going to control that is we're going to go back into our primaries and I'm going to go into my hue versus hue options. So now I'm under my hue versus hue, okay? And uh, I'm in my look node. And I'm going to go ahead and start messing with a few uh, parameters and see what happens. So now when I bring my green down, like look, it's kind of evening it out, okay? So if I go before and after, like it was way too green and now it's less, right? So now I'm going to go under my cyan and pull that around and now I have to actually pull the cyan up to get it close to that green value. Because as long as all these colors are in the same world, it's going to be a lot easier to then just apply that one big cake on look, which is like bringing that color in, okay? And it will all make sense. Now I'm going to go under my blue and I'm going to start moving it around. And once again, so bringing that up a little bit it evens it out. So now if I do before and after, like look how hodgepodge all these colors were to like how even they're getting now. I'm going to go back to my hue versus saturation and I'm going to take my green and I'm going to pull it down. So it does help a little bit, okay? So what this does is that, look at it, okay? So it's evening out the whole thing a little bit. Right. So now that we got that going on, what we're going to do is we're going to go in our RGB curves. We're going to break up the chain. So usually it's like selected like that. Break that up. Now I'm going to go in my red channel and just watch this. OK, I'm going to I'm going to take that here and I'm going to pull it down. Boom. So like, look what I'm doing. Right. That's pretty dramatic. Now I'm going to go under my green and I'm going to pull that down. Not too much. Take the sting off a little bit, and now I'm going to go under my blue, and let's see what we need to do. So we can take the blue up a little bit, but not too much. And now, if I do before and after, it's a pretty big difference, right? We're still not there, but it is a huge, huge difference, okay? Now I'm going to go and do an append node, like create another node. I'm going to call it look adjustment. And in this one, I'm going to grab my offset and I'm going to start moving it around. Basically, now I'm just trying to get that green in, okay? The greenish teal that we got going on there. So I'm bringing that color in and it's coming in pretty hot, right? So if I do on and off, like look at now we got that hint going on through and through. What I'm not liking is that how we have a little bit of the greenish teal in the hair here, and we have bluish teal too much here. So let's fix that. And fixing that is pretty easy. I'm going to go in my log wheels. I'm going to take my shadows, and I'm going to start countering that. So just look at. Now I'm bringing that back in there. So if, just look at this. If I do before and if I do after, just look at the hair. You get what I'm saying? massive difference. Okay. Same thing with the jacket. Just look at that jacket. Look at the jacket. Okay. We're getting there. This made a massive, massive difference. Now there's a few things that we have to do. So I'm going to right click right here and I'm going to say key mixer. Okay. What's the point of this? This is going to change everything. So I'm going to put the key mixer here. I'm going to send this output up here. I'm going to send this output here. And then I'm going to send this through. I'm going to feed it into my look node. And you're going to be like, dude, what did you just do? Everything looks like garbage. And it does until we do this. 
Now I'm going to go in my key settings right here, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to invert it. So now I'm saying leave everything else like the face and the lights, but affect everything else, okay, around it. Um, if this is, you know, a bit too much, it's a bit too push, we can go in our key gain right here and we can pull it back, right? It kind of split the difference. So let's see. Okay, maybe something like that. Like that's already looking better, okay? Now, what is happening with our lights, right? Because our lights are just not really giving us this yellow that we're looking for. And that's when we can go back in and we can mess with it a little bit more. So I can, you know, kind of just put a little bit more yellow. And like I said, guys, I don't want to overdo it. I don't want to make it too artificial. So I just want to introduce another color. So if I do before and after now, we have like a fun little color going on that like breaks everything up and it looks still realistic. It doesn't look fake. So I'm going to hold it right there. Now I want to go under my look adjustment one more time and I want to split the difference a little bit, right? Because I feel like it's breaking up a bit, like too much for my comfort. I want it to be even. Now I just grabbed my cyan and I raised it up quite a bit to bring the gap, you know, a little bit closer between the two. Now I can go into my offset again and then pull it down until I get that tenant teal. Get it a little bit more. So now we're getting that tenant teal, but we have to make up for it with our shadows again, right? Remember, we had to offset that. So I'm going to go under my blacks and I'm just going to keep raising it until we cancel it out. And once again, I'm just focusing on what's happening here and making up the difference. Let's go into our low range and raise it up so we can affect it a little bit more. So now we're really getting into her jacket. And then let's keep going and bring in that pure black. Okay. I'm just focusing on her hair right now. And then I'm going to go back in my low range and kind of crank it. So now I'm grabbing her jacket and it's getting in that similar zone right here. And uh, what we need to do is just go back in the skin and manipulate it a little bit more. So I'm going to go into my curves and I'm going to go under my red hue versus hue. And I'm going to try to pull it back a little bit and then do the same thing with yellow because now we just kind of have to give it a little bit more, you know, juice, uh, if you will. And then I'm going to go under my gain and kind of raise it a little bit more. And uh, at that point, let's just bring in a little bit more saturation in our yellow and pull it down somewhere around here and go back into our hue versus hue. Gamma down, gain up. Let's go back into our lights and give it more yellow. So something else that I'm noticing right now that needs to be fixed is definitely the skin just needs more juice. So let's try to do that. So I'm going to go under my red and yellow individually in hue versus saturation. And then I'm going to try to crank it up. So you are going to see the saturation coming in. See? And then I'm going to park it somewhere around here. And now I want to go under my hue versus hue and take my yellow and uh, try to bring back, you know, some of these skin tones, right? So just take it toward that magenta. And now if we just do a quick back and forth between the two, right? So we're getting a little bit more color in her skin. And I think we can do more. So I'm going to go under hue versus saturation, take my red and like crank it up. And now let's do before and after. And now let's give it a little bit more contrast, right? So I'm going to, I'm going to go under my contrast and pivot and I'm actually going to start giving it some contrast. And then again, take my gain, lift it. And now let's do before and after. Okay. So much better, right? So if I do literally, I mean, this is before, this is after. So now we're really creating a cool, like, look at this to that. 
we're getting really, really close. If I do before and after on the skin, I mean, it's just a night and day. Okay. And that's what's really selling the whole thing. And then we got a very similar tone in terms of the background going on. And then we pushed the lights, right? I wanted to push them. But once again, guys, like I said, I mean, if you look at the, uh, on the scopes level, it's looking really good. I mean, look at the blue to the blue, green to the green, and then red to the red. So it is looking good, but I just don't want to push more than that. I feel like it's going to start looking cheesy and it's just not going to look right. And look at the green to the, like, you know, like the shirt to the shirt, right? Skin to the skin and hair to the hair. Like, I mean, we are hitting, like, look at the hair right there. And even let's just look at the scopes, right? To how close we are to what we got going on. So let me just do before and after a couple of times like this to like really see if anything sticks out that I need to fix. Now, the last two things that I'm going to do to really wrap it all up, I'm going to click right here, create a new node. And uh, basically it's going to be a vignette. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, tilt it and add it somewhere around here and then give it a little bit of a aspect right there and give it a, just a little bit of a rotation and then, you know, um, soften it up quite a bit, right? So I'm just gonna go around 60-ish and then what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and invert it, okay? So now I go into my curves and I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that they're chained and then I'm just gonna go and select it from 40% point right there and then start bringing it down and uh, basically, let's just click on this once again so we can see what we're doing. And I'm focusing on this side, okay? And let's just bring it down even more and keep it somewhere around here. Now, guys, let me tell you something. I'm not really going to worry about what is happening on this side. And some might go, dude, nothing is happening here. So let's just keep it as is. The thing is, for me, I want it even because the lighting is even. You get what I'm saying? Like the lighting is coming from both sides. It's not coming from just one side. So this is the kind of stuff where you have to be not blinded by what is really happening in the image. And when you try to do one-to-one, -one, you get carried away and you go too hard on that. So for me, you know, I'm doing this and I'm liking what's happening in this side here. And that's pretty good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an outside node. And you can also do it just by right-clicking and saying node, outside node. Okay. I have a key on my panel, so I just hit that. Um, so this is going to be our outside vignette. And then this is going to be our inside. And that's going to be basically her. So I'm just going to go ahead and raise her up. And basically, I'm just focusing on where he is. And I want to kind of put her there. So maybe bring it down a little bit, something like that. So now if I do before and after, just look at the amount of difference we've made, right? So that is pretty epic. And now if I take these two, it's kind of unbelievable how big of a difference this makes, right? Like when you don't have vignette and you don't do this technique, like it just looks like, oh, this is perfect. Like let's print it. But then you do this and there's so much more emphasis on our girl. So now if I just go ahead and do this and we just go to our girl and uh, I take these two nodes and turn them on and off, just look at the amount of difference we're making. And now let's bring this image and let's go between the two and just look at the amount of difference that we're making. Like if you look at this, and then if I just do before these two and after, and now if I just do a swipe and look at the, diff, you know, what we've created. I mean, guys, this is a pretty <laughs> insane look. If I park it right here to where we started, to where we ended up, I mean, come on. And just look at the skin and everything, okay? So now what I want to do is I want to go here, I want to go back into this mode. It's now one thing that I am noticing as I am bringing uh, the vignette and like bringing this down is that it's adding a little bit more green than the, you know, color that we actually want. So in order to control that, we can do a couple of different things. First thing that I'm going to try is I'm going to go under my curves and I'm going to go under my hue versus hue options. So right now I'm under my hue versus hue. And what I want to do here is I want to take my cyan and kind of twist it. And, you know, I think that kind of did it, right? So, I mean, it's just a hint. And we kind of want to just get back into that. Like, you know, we don't want to go too far away from it, right? So, actually, let me just undo this and then try it again. Too much. 
and then pull it back. Obviously do too much and then pull it back. So even something like that, and then this doesn't really do anything. So I feel like even something like that brings a little bit of it back. And we are seeing it here too, right? Where the vignette is that it gets green where the vignette is. So even here we can see that. And now we just like balanced it out and it was just, you know, color grading is all about nuance and especially look recreations are all about that. So even like a little bit of a blue thing that we got going on there, we have it here. So you can see it, you know, how close we're doing like one to one, a little bit of like a greenish, you know, yellow, if you will, that's happening here. We have that here. You see what I mean? So it's really well blended in. If you look at it, like if we bring that in, how well it's blended in. So, all right, so let's go ahead and I'm going to kill all these nodes and let's start with the first one and see where we started to where we ended up. Okay. So we started with our exposure, then moved on and did our balance. And that helped us a lot with pulling clean keys. And then we went ahead, worked on the skin and that makes all the difference in the world. And then went ahead and grab our highlights and pushed it toward that yellow to kind of bring this juice in and then gone ahead and dialed everything in so we can start creating some sort of a look. And then in here in our seventh node, which was a look adjustment, that's where most of the magic happens. I mean, just look at, we were most of the way there and we could have called it here, but I wanted to take it a step further because we can obviously see a vignette that's happening here and then how the dude is just popping out. So I wanted to replicate that. And another thing that happened here is this right here, a key mixer where we pulled our skin and our highlights and inverted it. So basically we affected everything besides the skin and the lights in this look adjustment node. Then we moved ahead with our outside node and mimic this same vignette that's going on over here and then created an outside and brought her out just like what's happening here. So like he's pulled out everything else around him is brought down. And that's our final look. Let's check it out in full screen. I hope you guys had a blast. Let me know if there are any particular looks from TV shows or movies you want me to recreate. Drop a comment below. Do not forget to check out the link to the training, which is also in the description. One hour long training It's going to take you from not knowing anything about Resolve to comfortably working on a professional gig. And guys, on that note, smash that like button, subscribe to my channel for more awesomeness, and I will see you in the next video.